Hi, welcome to Culture Code. Today we're in Ikoi at Omenka Gallery, owned by Oliver Nwongu. You might recognize the last name. Yes, his father, Ben Nwongu, is the father of modern art from Nigeria and, yeah, Africa. Today, we're going to find out more about his father's works. He passed away 25 years ago, but in the space of two years, 2017 and 2019, two works of his appeared on scene, and they're quite similar. First was Tutu, they call it the Mona Lisa of Africa appeared in London and was sold in London for a record 1.6 million dollars. Recently another one was discovered it's called Christine of a Caribbean woman married to a Brit. We're here to find out more about those two works what they have in common and if there are other artworks like that out there. Come with me. The importance of or the legacy that he left was that he was able to merge um, traditional aesthetics with Western conventions of practice. You know, you can see that in his work, the womanhood, the movement, all of that. And you can oh. see that, all of that, he has color, you can see all of that rhythm. Yeah. You know, I think these are very important elements in his work, significant elements. Do you think this is a trend that will continue of discovering some of the dance works? Are there many artworks out there? Um, to is called the Mona Lisa of Africa. Yes. Are there other works like that? Out there, because it seems well, to give uh, the nearness, you know. So, yes. to one, he does yes. um, Christine, two years later, he yes. does um, two, two, and there's a very similar. Are there other works within that period or afterwards that are not? Well, this is an artist whose um, trajectory tr um, crossed or spanned over 60 years. You know, he went from the pre colonial to the post colonial periods, you know, all through the Nigerian Civil War, you know, and uh, there were various stimulus or stimuli rather for. Is um, is um, uh, for inspiration for him, you know. And uh, I see more works getting discovered because now there's so much global attention mm. on African art. Um, the prices for African art are skyrocketing. You mentioned earlier um, the record price uh, for Tutu the other day, and uh, with that, people are beginning to see that African art is not just purely for aesthetic enjoyment, or it's not just something exotic, you know, that act actually has value went to school with them at the Slade. It was one of the first uh, academically trained Nigerian artists and went to such a prestigious institution for that matter. And uh, even as early as 1946, he was already exhibiting with Picasso in France. So it's just unfortunate, you know, that uh, internationally, that uh, um, the Western uh, accounts of uh, history, art history, you know, excluded what was occurring in Africa at that time because they felt that Africans were copying what the Europeans were doing. But instead, you know, the modern art itself has its roots in Africa. We weren't giving our due credit. You know, the great forms of cubism, you know, came from the geometric forms of African art. Exactly. There's still more books to be written. Right now, the Benawong Foundation, for instance, is do, doing catalog resume on his works because, you know, because uh, there are a lot of forgeries out there now. And that's very significant because, you know, you can only copy, you know, an artist who you know, whose prices are beginning to rise. I mean, there's no point, you know, copying an artist whose works are not rising in value. So I think that's the important... Uh, it's supposed to be a series of um, talks. Yes. Um, what, what's been, why and why now? Well, the Bene Wong Foundation was established in 2003 in honor of Bene Wong, want to preserve his legacy. Uh, we've been doing this for a number of years now through exhibitions, debates, and talks like this, and lectures. And we've had the likes of uh, even the Vice President of Nigeria come to give a lecture on how art can shape society positively. So these are just some of the things that we're doing. And uh, Point of View is just one of those significant platforms. And Point of View is, um, is established to ensure that we build support for the Nigerian visual artist you know, through public and private sector partnership, because we believe that uh, it's time that even Nigeria looked away from uh, relying on a model product, you know, for its survival. You know, I think it's time we look to the creative sector. And I feel that with so much going on, you know, Nigeria being labeled for corruption, you know, mm. I think that it's time that we change negative Western perceptions on us, you know, and the best way to do that is through our creativity. Mm. You know, first, um, 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 topic or theme rather was about uh, artists gaining from their royalties you know just like how other authors and musicians keep gaining mm. we thought it was time that you know artists are able to gain an author could sell a million copies 
a musician could have like two million downloads and he would want even five million downloads the author want to sell like 10 million copies but for the artist very often he does one and that is the only copy that's out there so it's different if you're going to put a value to that he's not able to i think you made this point he's not going to make his gain by reproducing because if that that diminishes the work so it's not going to be by reproduction it's by the sale of that same original I was born here. Yes, I've always known this place as home. <laughs> okay. now, but this is now Omenka. Yes. Um, what is Omenka? Could you just talk about that? The name? It's, an, it's an honorific, you know, for someone who's very creative and someone who's gifted. Um, my grandfather was also an artist, although he was a traditional artist, a traditional sculptor of repute, and he carved uh, utilitarian objects. You know, and all the things like uh, for worship, mm -hmm. like staffs of office and all of that. You know, and uh, it was my father's first inspiration because my father lived at his feet. Um, my father went on to be one of Africa's greatest artists only in 1994 and I was going through some of his uh, papers and writings. You know, I discovered that uh, he was going to establish a gallery and call it Omenka in honor of his own father because his own father was known as Omenka. You know, and uh, I just felt that if I was ever going to establish a gallery, I would call it Omenka. You know, in fulfillment of my father's uh, dream, you know, of his own father. For me, he was a statesman. Yes. You know, his art transcended, or his his life and his work transcended even art. You know, and that's why, you know, you could credit the fact that even before his appearance on the Ni the Nigerian scene, for instance, art was uh, largely one of ridicule as a profession, mm -hmm. because it was meant for people who couldn't achieve the other courses like medicine and. Uh, engineering and all that so those who are less gifted academically will go for art but he came differently and he changed pers the whole perception of, of the african artist and uh, against his successes many artists have defined or framed their own works when you see the sculptures and when you see um, um, his works you know they were unifying so he wasn't an artist who was localized, for instance, you know, I mean, this is an Igbo man doing a sculpture of Shongo, for instance. Yeah. It's an Igbo man who is uh, doing a huge sculpture of the drummer, for instance, which is African in concept because the drummer being used for communications was very significant because in those days they used to draw people to the village square yeah. and send out with the drums. You know, it makes it also too, too very interesting because yes. it was painted, it's just after yes. the Civil War, yes. the Yoruba Yoruba princess. princess, yes. So it speaks also to your, to how your dad, um, you say, transcended or transcended borders. borders. Transcended borders. Transcended, uh, yes. Tribe. Tribe, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. I look forward to coming back here. Thank you very much. I look forward to that too. Well, the interview is over, and I'll say my takeaway from today is how. Art from Africa gets more relevance with the discoveries of Tutu and Christine. Christine is going to be auctioned in October. Tutu was auctioned two years ago at Bonham's record price. And I think it started all that discourse again over um, art from Africa. And I think, well, we got a surprise of Tutu last year, November at ArtX. Would Christine be there this year? I'd like to see it. <laughs>